Far west of the mainland, from the shadow of Great Karend, emerges the Shining Kingdom. For the first time, Queen Zyani Arkin has decided to open her land's borders to the outside. Welcome to Old School RuneScape's newest area expansion, Varlamore. My name is Jepperite. You may have heard of my series Northern UIM, where I play an account that admittedly can't access a single part of Varlamore. I will be watching respectfully from a safe distance, but you can experience the new content today. To get there, you'll first need to complete Children of the Sun, a short quest involving a Varlamore delegation in Varrock. Upon completion, follow the long line of newly created Varlamore-only accounts to the East Gate, where you can take a Quetzal straight to the capital of Varlamore. Immediately upon landing in Civitas Illafortis, or Fortis as the locals call it, you'll be able to start the second quest in the Varlamore questline, Twilight's Promise, where you'll be introduced to more characters of note as well as the lore surrounding the kingdom. The Bazaar of Civitas Illafortis is a bastion of wealth and commerce that will be very attractive to players looking to train their thieving. Every once in a while, a citizen may get distracted by a lowly street urchin. When this happens, you'll have a 100% success rate when pickpocketing them, and you'll continue to pickpocket automatically, making you feel like a real trickster. In addition to normal loot, you may also receive a key. This key grants you entry into this unlucky individual's home, letting you relieve them of their valuables. Just be careful, as you'll definitely want to make your escape before the angry homeowner returns. The Hunter Guild sits far outside the city walls, in the center of the vast Avium Savanna, accessible by road or via Quetzal. With level 46 Hunter, you'll be able to enter the guild and learn the ability to prepare various low-level Hunter Meats, which have a unique healing over time effect when you eat them. You'll also gain access to Rumors, a system similar to Slayer Tasks or Farming Contracts. A Hunter within the guild will task you to find a rare creature part from a specific Hunter creature. While you may need to travel a great distance to find it, upon your return, you'll receive a healthy amount of bonus XP as well as a loot sack, containing standard hunter goodies, a chance for a piece of the new hunter's skilling outfit, or maybe even the rare Quetzal pet. Those with a high hunter level will want to complete the guild's quest at first light, as it unlocks the option to accept higher tier rumors. Completing a certain number of rumors will also give you benefits within the guild. After your fifth rumor, you'll receive blueprints for the basic Quetzal Whistle, an upgradable item which holds five charges that teleports you to the Hunter's Guild. At 25 rumors, you'll be able to cook mid-tier Hunter meats, such as Grok and Kayat. And at 50 rumors, you'll be able to cook the highest tier of Hunter meats, Dashing Kebet and Antelope. The Avium Savanna sprawls from Civitas Illafortis to the Sunset Coast. The savanna is a completely new biome to Gilinor and has many unique creatures that call it home. Sunlight and Moonlight Moths can be captured using a butterfly net at 65 and 75 Hunter respectively. Opening these jars provides helpful benefits to you and up to three nearby players. Sunlight Moths restore reduced stats and heal 8 hit points, while Moonlight Moths restore a bit of prayer. Sunlight and Moonlight Antelopes can be caught in pitfall traps at level 72 and 91 Hunter respectively. Their horns can be used to upgrade and fletch stronger ammunition for the Hunter's crossbow. They also drop Antelope Fur, which can be combined with Pyre Fox and Jaguar Fur to craft the Mixed Hide Armor set. This set requires level 60 ranged and 50 defense to equip, and, much like Spiky Vambraces, provides a slight bonus to melee strength. The Ember-tailed Jerboa requires level 39 Hunter and a box trap. The Jerboa's tail can be crafted into throwable Hunter Spears, a ranged weapon which rolls its damage based on your melee strength bonus, making it an excellent combination with the Mixed Hide Armor set. You cannot hunt the Capybara. He is too powerful. And finally, we come across the Teku Salamander, a new tier of Salamander that can be caught at level 79 Hunter. They use Irritar as ammunition and require level 80 attack, ranged, and magic to wield. Ralos's rise towers above the savanna. Atop this mountain, you'll find the Teomat, a place of worship for Ralos, god of the sun. By pouring a jug of wine into the libation bowl, you'll be able to offer stackable bone shards for prayer XP. 
Bone shards can be obtained by doing various activities around Varlamore. The easiest way is simply by mining them. Alternatively, while breaking and entering, you may come across an ivory figurine that can be chipped into shards. Or you can just take some regular bones to the exposed altar on top of Ralos' rise. Within the mountain, the dwarves of Camtorum have stumbled upon an ancient temple, a prison for three powerful beings. After completing the Perilous Moons quest, you'll be able to venture into Nepotsli. This is a new, mid-level PVM activity that's a step up in difficulty from a boss like Scurrius and is approachable solo or with a team. While nothing's stopping you from bringing supplies and racing to the bosses right away, it's worth your time to explore the surroundings. Every room contains both combat and skilling opportunities, allowing you to accumulate food and potions and ready yourself for the difficult fights. Particularly resourceful players may be able to sustain themselves entirely from the dungeon, removing the need to bank altogether. The boss's attacks hit hard, and each boss has a way to lower your DPS when you take damage. Prioritizing defense is a must here, so maybe consider leaving the fighter torso at home for this one. Unlike traditional PVM encounters, these bosses have a unique health bar for each player in the fight. This means you're encouraged to enjoy this dungeon with friends of all levels, without worrying about lowering your potential rewards. Speaking of rewards, there are a lot of them. Sulfur Blades are a two-handed melee weapon that split their damage into two hit splats. They require 55 attack to wield, and can be obtained by defeating Nagwa within the dungeon. The Dual Makwa Huidl is a two-handed melee weapon that attacks twice. Its special attack sacrifices 10% of your current hit points to raise its minimum and maximum hit by 25%. While wielding this item with the full Blood Rager set, requiring 50 defense and 75 strength, you'll also gain the Bloodthirst passive effect. Whenever you land a hit, you'll have a 33% chance to speed your next attack up by one game tick. The Spell Spear is a two-handed magic melee hybrid weapon. Its special attack can only be used against a bound target, and it increases your accuracy and damage by 1% per game tick remaining on that bind. With the full Frost Moon set equipped, you'll also gain the Spellblade effect. After you cast a Binding or Freezing spell, there is a 20% chance to immediately follow it up with a melee attack. And finally, we have the Eclipse Atlatl, a two-handed ranged weapon that scales with your melee strength bonus, stats conveniently provided by the Eclipse Armor set. With the full set equipped, you'll activate the Searing Blows passive, giving your attacks a 20% chance to inflict a stackable burning effect. The Atlatl's special attack consumes the remaining burn damage, increasing your max hit by that much and your minimum hit by half that amount. If you're hungering for a challenge, you'll want to head back into Civitas Illa Fortis, into the Fortis Colosseum, a new wave-based minigame that'll test your PVM skills to their absolute limits. Unlike the fight caves in Inferno, no two Colosseum runs will be the same. At the end of each wave, you'll have to choose between three random modifiers that ramp up the difficulty. As the waves increase in complexity, your rewards will grow as well. You can choose to claim your spoils and walk away at any point. But if you want to continue, you'll have to stake what you've earned. Fail, and you'll be leaving empty-handed. But if you make it far in the Colosseum, you'll be rewarded with glory. And uniques. The Sunfire Fanatic Armor Set serves as a direct upgrade to Proselyte, requiring 40 defense and 60 prayer to equip, and boasting an additional plus 2 prayer bonus per piece. Echo Crystals can be used to upgrade Guardian Boots into Echo Boots. These boots have an AoE recoil effect that damages all enemies around you. They can be recharged with more Echo Crystals. Sunfire Splinters are a common reward from the Colosseum and can be combined with Essence and Fire Runes at a Shrine of Ralos to craft Sunfire Runes. When you use these new runes in place of Fire Runes, the spell you cast will gain a 10% minimum hit. Sunfire Splinters are also used to charge other rewards, such as the Tenalstix of Ralos, a one-handed thrown ranged weapon that bounces back to you after you throw it. When charged with Sunfire Splinters, this weapon will hit the target twice, rolling accuracy and damage separately. The Tenal Stick's special attack lowers the target's defense by 10% of its magic level, and when charged, this attack will hit twice as well. Should you manage to emerge victorious from the Colosseum, you'll earn yourself Dizana's Quiver, the new best-in-slot range cape. The Quiver is able to hold two different types of ammo, selecting them automatically based on your current weapon. 
When the quiver is charged with Sunfire Splinters, it will empower its ammunition, further increasing its accuracy and damage. Do note, however, that only ammo fired from the quiver, meaning bolts and arrows, receive this bonus. Sorry, Blowpipe. You were nerfed for a reason. And that's all of Varlamore. Part 1. That's right, there's a second part to this expansion that's releasing later this year, including the island of Alderin as well as a group boss on top of the Hailstorm Mountains. But I expect Part 1 should keep you busy for the time being. Big thanks to Jagex for letting me share Varlamore with you, and thank you for watching. If you're looking for a change in scenery and enjoy silly area-locked accounts, consider checking out my channel. It might not be Varlamore, but Relic is still pretty cool. Right? Right? It's a bit gray, actually. Surely the next area expansion will be up here.